multi-million dollar type projects. Um, the guy that they usually call to kind of help oversee some of that stuff. Um, I like to play basketball, hang out with my family, and uh, all that good stuff. I like to enjoy myself as well, too. And uh, my kind of part here doing this with uh, Tony O'Brien. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Tony O'Brien. I'm the owner of Alfred. I'm having an issue with an accident with his family. If you say he'll come in when he gets here, though. So, other than that, we'll like all the. Uh, the panelists introduce themselves. You can see we got some very distinguished men here, and again, we wanted some people that we thought would be able to add and really provoke a lot of good conversation that we feel like we should be having in our community. So I'll start with Mr. Guest here. Good afternoon. I am Brother Rashid Guest. I am a minister of the gospel. Uh, raised here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Matter of fact, me and Tony played football together. Uh, me and my wife, we uh, live in Atlanta, Georgia right now. We've been up there for about the past four years now. Uh, we Dodging foreign objects, street knowledge. I should have went to college. All stacked against me, surviving off instinct. Laherme caught a case, Zelda's lost family members. Product of his environment, projects produce violence in the middle of the streets. Cause that's how we eat. Just a rap about the trap, don't mean I ain't about peace. Good evening, brothers. Good evening. Good evening. And sister. Uh, Dr. Richard <laughs> Warren. Uh, director and founder of Spring Zone St. Pete. Youth Development Services, grant writing program, uh, coordination and management. Uh, right now, uh, our largest program is where my focus is, and that's you guys. Uh, that's the mental health, healthy manhood development of black men and boys in St. Petersburg, ages 12 and up. Uh, besides from those programs, I'm also involved in helping families with our children that are in the truancy and delinquency courts. The legal system can be kind of tricky, especially for a lot of parents who aren't familiar with the language. Uh, some of the things that they try to do to you know, put barriers of success in the way of a child trying to get back into school or trying to navigate the legal system that still attends school. Increase your knowledge and that'll increase your funds. If everyone succeeds, then crime will decrease and people will live instead of resting in peace. Unity, that's what we need. Stand up and be a positive force in the community. We are one. But um, my name is Marcus, I am a poet, I'm a thinker, at least I like to consider myself that. On the same room, that just shows that there's enough brothers in here that are concerned about the future of our community. We have more than enough to get started, so y'all give yourself a round of Racism. Racism is a lot of power. So every system within the United States understands that it is infected from top to bottom with racism. Mm -hmm. I also work in an industry out of social services, which is dominated by white men. So of course, many of our early struggles where he's intimidated. His voice is too big. He's too big. He's scary. But what I found was you don't want to know. So my thing, what I like to contribute to the big picture is uh, just get the information out to the people. Fair, honest information. But it's Rashid's uncle, and this is my brother Richard Guest. I am a disabled uh, Vietnam vet, combat wounded, and I am a worldwide radio, a very successful business that uh, we're trying to launch here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We do uh, contemporary, traditional, so we were quartet, uh, gospel music, and suit. Generation idea of what it is to be successful. That's the first for the um, last 14 years. I'm um, just not getting some entrepreneurship and um, I'm going to do some big, big business. Unfortunately, I have two daughters, right? So anything that's going to help young men, that potential husband for them, 
right? I always want to try to get involved. So one of my favorite is playing well, she can get well, so I hope this is helping us play well so I can get some get well also. I also started a small. Mm. I picked some of these, so it's kind of a little biased for me. Um, <laughs> but um, I feel like we should start with a little bit about racism, right? And not from a negative type of standpoint, but just more or less. Because I know for me, like in the corporate world, where I do have a, a business that I run on the side too, but a lot of the incomes I get is from the corporate world. And I work with the good old boys, as they say, right? Where I'm one of the youngest executives in my industry. So with every single meeting that I'm in, not only am I the youngest, I'm the only spot in the room. Mm -hmm. And coming from South St. Pete, they don't really understand how to, how to really respond to us, right? So my mom, even though we grew up in the Heights, my mom always made me speak proper English. So it was always like they didn't, so they don't know where I come from when, I, when I'm there. And they'll make comments, and I found ways to kind of make them understand and kind of check them. You know, before it was like I was like the angry black man at first, but then I figured out how to like elevate my, my vocabulary really and not be as mad to try to address some of those things. So my question to the panelists is, how does it feel to be a fly in the milk? And then how do you make sure that you don't drink the milk and stay in? Black person, some people I saw, and uh, growing up in Germany, and then uh, by the time I was six years old, we found ourselves in the middle of New Orleans, and now I'm a white boy. So I've experienced it from both ends. But as far as being the uh, spot in the room, you you know, to me, I work with Brother Jafar, and we're—I mean, I don't want to say it over oversell it, but we have the ability to change the culture. We have the ability. We bring something so unique to the table and our story is so strong. What it took for you to get from Bethel Heights to where you are now is so strong that you just add to your confidence when people act in ignorance or treat you other than what you deserve. Mm -hmm. So to me, my past, is, it, 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 it kind of just enhances my confidence, you know? And how do you remain true to yourself? Uh, we, we got a mission. And just stay focused on that mission. That's, that would be my answer to that tough question. Okay. But I mean, human resources, man. Human resources is mainly white and women at that. So when you are like the only black man in there, there's more attention, there's more scrutiny about anything that you do. You don't smile when you walk in the room. Someone thinks something's wrong. And a lot of times, what I found myself doing early on in my career, I found myself trying to assimilate to what they thought, trying to make them more comfortable. But I realized that by doing that, I was not being true to myself, and I was finding myself frustrated. I was finding myself resenting. Right. Um, uh, the tape, the way he delivered it, to focus on what he said, and understand that this is what happens when we are not there to talk to our boys. This is what happens. He explained it to you. This is exactly why when you see a young man, you do not ask him to pull up his pants before you ask him his name. This is why you don't tell him to stop smoking before you ask him his situation. This is why before you ask him how he behaved in his school, you don't touch him as a human being first. He just gave you the exact thing that you need to do to connect with a young black male right now. So all of your self-righteous, we're going to throw Jesus over it. If you ain't doing Jesus, we can't, you know. If you won't pull up your pants and have respect, I'm like, no. You have got to get on their level and understand how they are thinking. And he broke it down.